So, after all, you have decided to play some DBD, but there's one problem. You don't have any friends beside your mom, and you have no idea what to do. But in that case, you could always play as a killer. No more holding M1 for minutes, wondering when the fun will begin. Now, you just need to fight and kill everyone on the map. And, since you are the killer, no more fear. You are fear. Okay, maybe it was too dramatic. But anyway, let's start with everyone's favorite. Ah, the Trapper, a star of a game, a shining champion of DBD killer roster. Or at least he was, until a new killer was released, but more on that later. Now let's focus on the Trapper. Trapper's real name is Evan McMillan. From this you can guess that his realm is McMillan Estate, which includes five maps, which are actually quite decent for Trapper. Okay, let's dig into Evan's story. Evan McMillan really idolized his father. It wasn't because he was just heir to a great fortune, it was how his father ran the estate. Raised under his firm hand, Evan also was running the workforce with an iron hand. And of course production was always high at McMillan estate. It wouldn't matter what his father would ask of him, Evan would do anything. When Archie McMillan finally snapped, Evan became his enforcer in the worst mass murder in history. They never proved that it was Evan who led over a hundred men into those dark tunnels before detonating the explosives, sealing them to their fate. No record is ever made of what became of Evan McMillan. Yeah, it does sound very generic, but hey, I am not the one who wrote it. Anyway, I think it's time to jump to his power. Trapper is an easy killer, which is indicated to you with this little note right here. But the only easy part about his power is to understand how to use it. You just right click and put the trap on the ground right in front of you. To use traps to its full potential, you would need to use your brain and understand what survivors would do and act accordingly. You can make almost any window or vaulting point on the map into a deadly trap, forcing the survivor to actually avoid tile they are not 100% sure are safe. Unless, of course, you just run into a lucky survivor who runs the whole map without triggering a single trap, or swift, or anyone who's actually paying attention. To be a good trapper means to know and understand the map, so you could use your trap efficiently. At the beginning of the match you will only have two traps, which means that you have to actually go and find additional traps lying around for you to pick up. All of the above means that you will usually spend a lot of time at the beginning of every match creating a deadly zone around a few generators, picking and placing traps at vaults, pallets and other narrow places. Trapper is a regular killer. Regular height, regular weight, regular terror radius of 32 meters and regular speed of 4.6, which means that you're already much faster than some other slower killers. Did she just teleport it? Your biggest trait is, well, territory control, as it takes time to disarm your trap, so it couldn't be done in the middle of chase. Survivors are forced to either take a hit or step into a trap. That also means that Trapper excels at the most hated killer tactic ever. Camping. What a twist! After you down the survivor and hide him under your bed in a basement, you can actually trap the whole killer shack and just wait for all other altruistic survivors come to die. That will guarantee you at least one kill. Just because even semi-competent survivor might understand what exactly you're trying to achieve and, well, just abandon the lucky one. Another great strength for Trapper is an element of surprise, sort of. Your power is mostly passive, just a prep work and you hope that it will work. So survivors can never be 100% sure that a tile they are trying to currently loop is safe or the window they are trying to vault is trapped or not, as there is no any indication whatsoever. 
that might help you with the chases with the special nervous survivors. But not a lot. Weakness of the Trapper is his power. Even though it does have a really good snowball potential, it's still mostly luck based power, which completely depends on map, map layout and survivor actions. So you could have a perfect map with the tile one to one, or you could have a coin filled. But at the end of the day, almost every map in the game is terrible for Trapper. Most new maps are grassless, unless of course you count this excuse as a grass. Additionally, if you're only starting to play and you don't have a good knowledge of maps and you don't know how tiles work, it might be really hard to understand where you should place your traps. And no, it's not as easy as just watching one YouTube video and get a full list of best places for traps. Secondly, if you're looping a survivor in the completely trap-free zone of a map, you're just a regular 4.6 killer with no active powers. So unless you do have a chase helping perks, it might take a while. But at least he's still better than other slow killers. Why do I even try? Most of the trapper's add-ons are pretty much useless, just like your degree. But you could at least pick a few semi-useful like bags, which will help you to have one additional trap at hand. And with the trapper sack, you get all your traps at hand at the beginning of a match, but you don't pick them up anymore because you're too fancy. Hunting stone will prevent survivors from freeing themselves, as they would have a heart attack after a successful attempt. Iridescent stone will reset any random trap every 30 seconds, but usually it's not the one you want it to be. Trapper also has a lot of coils. All of them revolves around disarming traps by either increasing the time it takes, or straight up injuring survivors trying to disarm your trap. Fastening tools will increase your trap's setting speed, and they also increase rescue and escape time. Also you can grab trapper gloves or waxing brick to increase the bonus. You can also change jaws of your trap. Padded jaws if you don't want any blood on your newly polished traps, and you have no intentions of winning this game. Lantern jaws will inflict a deep wound, which increases the time survival will take healing. Serrated jaws will inflict hemorrhage status effect, and rusted jaws will inflict mangled status effect. Which kinda sucks, not gonna lie. The rest of the items provide very minor improvements. The only one to mention would be makeshift wrap. If you can't help but step into your own trap, this will help you a lot. Trapper's teachable perks are quite useful on most killers so you might want to level them up just for them. Unnerving presence will make survivors more nervous, prompting them to make more mistakes by increasing skill check trigger odds and decreasing success though. Which sounds great, until you realize that even semi-competent survivors do not miss skill checks and every successful skill check will actually save them precious time. So don't bother, unless you go with impossible skill check build. Brutal strength will make you break pallets, doors and backbones of your enemies 20% faster, which actually helps you in chases a lot, and agitation will increase your speed while you carry a survivor. It will also increase your tear radius by 12 meters. Works great with Star Trek. The most useful perk for Trapper is Corrupt Intervention. It will block three furthest generator for two minutes, so you can spend this time preparing your territory. In general, every game slowing perk will help you, such as Deadlock, Deadman Switch, Oppression, or you could go full late game build. With No Way Out, Remember Me, Know It, and you trapping the exit gate, it will buy you a lot of time. Hex perks are quite good on Trapper as well, since you can trap a Hex Totem, making it harder for Survivor to cleanse it fast, and most importantly, making it impossible to cleanse it quietly. But in general, there is no specific perks that enhance your power, so you could use perks to boost your general performance, such as save the best for lost, play with your food, bamboozle, brutal strength, etc. But at the end of the day, we all know that you're going to pick agitation and iron hand, so you could take survivors down the basement and camp them mercilessly. Trapper, mechanically, is a very simple killer, but since outcome of match will depend on your ability to predict survivor's movement, games could go very wrong, very fast. When everything works as planned, you get correct map, 
with a good placement of traps, generators, tiles, etc. And you are able to predict how survivors will move. You can start a chain of events, making you feel like you're a goddamn genius. But again, usually competent survivors can avoid your traps with ease by simply paying attention. At the end of the day, Trapper is just a regular killer with a random power which might work wonders or not work at all. But at least you can use your power to cancel some annoying loops and not waste time as other slower killers. Okay, now that's a bull.